Looks like I need some new airplane parts. Well, the aftermath. Motor still works. Yeah, it ran and then shot one of its blades off into outer space on the next run-up. Uh. Good luck gaining replacement parts for this fan. The manufacturer insists that they're carefully and dynamically balanced. There's even some markings on the blade that indicate this. So is it a throwaway? Well, let's find out. I happen to have access to a RevoPoint scanner, and I wanted to give it a try on this tiny little part. Unfortunately, there are a couple things working against me. One, I've had almost zero practice with this scanner, and I only have the scanner, not the turntable. Hey there, RevoPoint marketing guys. Help me help you. Oh, I'm just kidding, these guys have no clue who I am, but it doesn't hurt to ask, does it? And this is a dark part. Also, I need to be able to scan both sides of this part. Now, my goal here is to get enough usable information from these scans to be able to use this data and bring it into Fusion 360 to recreate this turbine wheel. So this video will be about me doing just that. We'll go from scan to model and then to SLA printing. Why SLA? Because I want all of the resolution that I can get on these tiny little airfoils. And I have a brand new 12K resolution SLA printer that's perfect for the job. But you might say, resin prints are brittle. It won't work. Besides, how will you ever get it balanced? Well, I would agree with you on all of this. But out of desperation, I went ahead and tried it. But does it work? Well, let's find out. What you're seeing here is the RevoScan 5 software interface. In the very center, you're seeing a preview of what the software is going to pick up. On the left side, you're seeing a preview of camera depth, and then on the bottom, the actual RGB camera view with blue crosshairs. I actually found these quite helpful, as the subject seems to jump around unpredictably a bit because it's attempting to link the scan data together when it scans. On the right hand side is the control panel where you can both scan, edit, and merge your scan data. Under accuracy mode, you can select between standard or high accuracy. Tracking mode, you can tell the scanner to track features or if your part is fairly featureless, you can have it track control points, which would be little dots all over your model as I understand it. I didn't try this feature. I'd love to hear your comments below if you have. This next setting object type was important because if you're scanning a black object like I was, it will absolutely not scan it unless you set it to dark object mode. Color scanning, kind of cool. For some types like OBJ, it will also export out a material map. Useless for my purposes, but cool anyway. Hide surfaces. This was very effective and it basically removed the tabletop that the part was sitting upon saving me editing time later. Scanning distance. You can tell the scanner the distance range to be looking, so to speak. This lets you filter out things that may not be the focus of the scan. And then there is accessories. Should you actually have a turntable, this is where you would link it up. Again, I do not, and I'm not happy about it. Just to the left of this area, is a vertical window giving you some feedback as to the quality of the distance from your part. Obviously the goal here is to be in the excellent range. Once you hit the scan button, it will start collecting data. To fake the fact that I did not have a turntable, I was very slowly and carefully rotating the camera around the object. This worked, but left me with quite a bit of artifacts that I suspect would not have been there otherwise. Once you hit complete, you now have the option for editing. There's an auto edit and a manual edit mode, and since I'm a complete newbie to this scanner, I chose the easy route here. It gave me the option of fusing the point cloud, and then also creating a mesh if I wished. This mesh is what I will import into Fusion. In all fairness to RevoScan, I think I've come up with the perfect torture test for consumer scanner. It's not on a turntable, one, and not only does this part have many identically repeatable facets in a circular fashion, it's also a black part. 
Now, scanning with dark surfaces turned on does help, but could we perhaps assist the scanner in some way? Maybe we can uh, come up with a different solution here. Let's uh, look for scanning spray. This looks promising. Wow, turn the part white. What a good idea. What does this stuff cost anyway? Oh, wow. Will we come up with a better solution here, maybe? So here it is. Rubbing alcohol and baby powder. I hate the smell of this stuff. Uh, you'd think baby powder smells great, but I had younger siblings. It was always punctuated with uh, another fairly unpleasant aroma. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, oh the smell of this stuff. Let's see how this does. More of the nasty stuff. I'm just blowing on the part here to get it to dry quicker. Not really a black part anymore. We'll see how that works. Oh, wow. Look what showed up today at the office. A turntable. I think you are finally legit. You're a full-blown YouTuber with product endorsements. I can see it now. You and Mr. Beast hanging out with celebrities. I bet you have a silver plaque already in the mail. Actually, I'm joking. Cody bought this for the makerspace, and he wants his scanner back, you dork. Okay, let's try this again now with a turntable. This will be a great test to see how much the scan quality improves over the last scan. Now with the new turntable included, I can come up to the Accessories tab, select Dual Axis Turntable, then Connection. The turntable uses Bluetooth connection. On the next screen you will see, under my devices, Revo Dual Axis Table. Select the Connect button and save. Now when you go back to Accessories, the Settings option is available to you. In this setting, you can adjust rotation speed and angle of the turntable. In the latest iteration of the software, you can now turn on Dual Axis Turntable Sync. With this on, you no longer have to manually start the scanner. The scan buttons on the main page will control starts and stops. So let's give this a try. As I suspected, with the turntable running, the quality of the scan improved dramatically. This is the first attempt at my turntable scan. I'm very impressed. But, as I uh, mentioned earlier, I want both sides, so I attempted a second scan from a completely different position. After processing these both, I am going to attempt the merge feature. This time, the scanner does a good job in finding points and doing a merge. Now I have data on the airfoil on both the top and bottom. Now came the time to export. I used the OBJ export option, but STL is also available. Now let's see what we can get into Fusion. Simply select the Upload tab here. Choose Select Files, then hit the Upload button. Wait a bit for Fusion to crunch. Then it appears in your data panel. When I open it, it is clear that it is not aligned in any way. I have to spend a little time lining it up. Once done, I have all the information now that I need to model. I imported the better model now so that you can see what it looks like in Fusion. But I had previously recorded the actual modeling part from the older, poorer quality scan without the turntable. I'm going to show the modeling on that one because that is the one I actually already printed and successfully flew. Under the mesh tools, what I first did was create face groups so that I could work on only a section of the part. From there, in the form tools, I begin by generating a face using simple mode and turned object snap on. After my first face, I then switch to edge mode and create additional sections. You will see me doing this and then highlighting the body and selecting the pull command which I have set to a keyboard key of shift P on my computer. I can then see where I need to add additional detail on this foil shape. Now I wrap around the front leading edge and for a while I simply guess at the underside shape. I'll later import the underside version of the scan as well. 
Now repeat this process on the tip of the blade now, adding detail as needed. And I then use the bridge command and select the edges of both bodies. I specify the face count at 3. Now on the back side I begin adding edges by holding down my shift button and moves, moving the gizmo. I want my underside data at this point so I import the underside scan and attempt to manually align it. I'm sure it's not perfect but it's close and given the size of the part it's incredibly small increments. I continue to edit the geometry to mimic the underside of the shape as closely as possible. I'm now cleaning up my rings and removing distortion. I actually make a mistake here that I didn't notice until the end but I was second guessing the accuracy of the scan and I straightened faces in a way that I thought they needed to go. In doing so I inadvertently removed a critical part of the shape of this blade. Unlike a propeller this EDF fan has the blade scooping forward right at the tips ever so slightly. I assumed to control propeller tip vortices. The scan picked up this nuance but I initially thought it was an error. Bear in mind this is a deviation of probably less than half a millimeter. And I didn't catch this until after filming, so before printing I went back and corrected this mistake. For the center hub I elected to do a mesh section sketch. I selected the plane I wanted this sketch on and then moved to the exact position. Next I edited my sketch and chose under create to fit curves to mesh section. This time the curve type I chose was circle. The circle it created was almost dead on the measurements that I made with my calipers on the physical part. Now I manipulate the geometry, create the blade, I then stitch this all together to create a solid body and then create a circular pattern of the body to equally distribute the blades all the way around the hub. I then cut a hole for the center shaft and create a sketch to create the center voids and reinforcing spokes. Lastly, this is a 50 millimeter fan so I create a circle of exactly this dimension, extrude it down and cut the outer tips to precisely this shape. Let's see how this thing prints. Always got to glove up for this stuff. And here it is. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of the original fan versus the EDF fan I just printed. I'm quite happy with the results, but will it run? My concern over balancing ended up being a complete non-issue. As for flying, it flew just fine. I know that it is not as durable as the original fan, but it can totally withstand the loads of flight with no problems. In the future, I will experiment with other resin chemistries that promise much more strength. For now, however, assuming I don't make any more terrible flying mistakes like at the outset of this video, my EDF jet flying wing will be just fine. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, or just watch my next video here.